How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine. This is part 15, making a start on the reversing gear. And this is a very strange kind of engineering. This is working with castings. When I look at this, I think it would be easier to fabricate these parts. But when these castings are cleaned up, and the holes put in the right place, they have a charm all of their own. I do have a bit of a problem though. There is a brass plug in a hole in the steam chest just where this bracket has to fit, so I'm going to have to plug up that hole, then once I've cleaned up the gunmetal castings and machined them, I can bolt them in the correct position. And looking at these castings, and then looking at the drawing, there's quite a lot of cleaning up to do. The castings are not particularly bad, they are what they are, castings, but they're quite a large size for what they have to be at the end of the machining process, so I'm going to start off the cleaning process, and quite a lot of it really, on the one inch belt sander. There are quite a few permutations on how to do this job, I'm not saying this is the correct way, this is the way I'm going to do it. I've individually cleaned up the parts and then I'm going to solder them together in exactly the same way as I made the big end brasses in a previous episode. By soldering these two parts together and treating them as one component, it makes it a lot easier to get a good end result. I've applied a generous amount of Fryerlux solder paint and now I'm using the blowtorch to heat the components up to melt the solder. I'm also going to add in a little bit more extra solder from my roll, just to make sure that they're firmly soldered together, because I don't want them falling apart midway through an operation. In no time at all, the part is hot enough to melt the solder, so it's just a case of letting the solder flow and leaving the part to cool. Don't mess about with it, don't move it, just leave it there, let it cool, because if you quench it prematurely, it will drop back into two component parts. Here I'm applying the extra solder, and now I'm just leaving it. There's plenty to get on with, I'm going to work on the drop arm. This is a cast iron casting, so I can't solder this to anything, nor do I really need to solder it to anything. And cleaning it up is quite a work of art, and it's a good job I'm a keyboard player, because I can do this with my left hand. I didn't realise it looked like this till I saw it on video. After cleaning up the drop arm for a while, it's back to working on the bracket, because by this time it was cool enough to work on again. And I'm starting off the cleaning process by using a needle file to get this as flat as I can. It's quite difficult in the recess. I don't really see this as engineering, and to be honest I quite enjoy doing it, because as I've mentioned many many times, I'm not an engineer. This is a creative process, it's a little bit like sculpture. And you only get out what you put in. I could leave it like this and it would look quite rough, but the engine would still work. And I see many examples of workmanship like that. But this is where patience really comes into its own. It's a case of filing and sanding, and filing and sanding again. I'm not going to do it all by hand though, my lifespan's not long enough. Initially, I'm just using a needle file to roughly clean the part, and I do notice quite a lot of casting sand in the inside areas of the casting. This needs to just be scraped away. I don't want this to look like it's been CNC machined. I want it to look like a human being has put some effort into cleaning it up with a file and sandpaper and little machine tools, etc. And the small machine tool I'm about to use is my Minicraft drill fitted with a drum sander which just about gets into the recesses. It would be possible using things like dental burrs and small drum sanders and little grinders to get the finish on the inner surface just as shiny as the finish on the outside surfaces, but then it wouldn't look like a casting. It will look okay in the end. Even though this part I'm working on is actually two pieces, as you know, I'm working on it as though it's only one. So now it's time to drill the hole through the centre of it and I'm making sure it's exactly where I need it to be, and this is how I generally do it. I mark it out, and I turn the drill chuck by hand, just to make a little mark with the centre drill, and when that gets to be somewhere near, I put the power on, and drill deeply into the work with the centre drill. After using the centre drill, I drill a hole, one imperial size, less than 5 16 of an inch, and the reason for doing this is so that I can put a reamer through, to get the final finish and an accurate size to the hole. I'm possibly running slightly fast for reaming, but I'm feeding the reamer in very slowly, and I think the hole will be okay. I don't want it too tight anyway. This is not a piston or a cylinder, it's just a bracket that holds a shaft, that holds a drop arm, 
which moves the levers that move the expansion link. So now the component has an accurate 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter hole through the middle of it, nicely reamed. So what I'm doing now is using the drum sander to smooth out the area where I need to drill a couple of holes to take two 4BA bolts which will fasten the bracket to the side of the steam chest. So I need something for the 4BA bolts to press down onto when they're tightened. And it needs to be fairly even, it can't press down on something uneven because it will not be right at all. I could put this in the milling machine, but then it's really not going to look like a casting. So I'll continue doing it this way, and at the end of it when it's fastened to the engine, I can be quite smug thinking, I've made that. And long after I'm gone, when Time Team dig it up, they will say, this is an interesting find. This is a component made in the 21st century, and quite amazingly, it's not CNC machined. It's been made entirely by hand, apart from a couple of drilled holes. It must have been made by one of those primitive types that inhabited the northern part of England during the 21st century. After drilling the holes for the mounting bolts, I heated up the part and separated the two individual pieces. I'm trimming one of the pieces, followed by the next piece, to the exact size shown on the drawing. And you can see this because I'm using a micrometer to keep checking it. By using a reamer to accurately size the holes in the bracket, the fit is quite good on a piece of 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter stainless steel. And even though I've got the brackets back to front, you can see the principle. In between this bracket is fitted this drop arm. Because all the surface dimensions were done on the belt sander, when the part was one component and the holes were also drilled at this time, the part is very accurate for its intended purpose. You will notice that in order to fit this bracket to the steam chest, I had to plug up the hole that was just above where the bracket fits. After the bolts holding the bracket were fully tightened and the bracket was secured to the steam chest, I lubricated it with some machine oil and used a piece of 516 stainless steel to make sure that everything lined up properly. Here is the almost finished bracket and here is the bracket as it started out. Shaping this bracket and drilling the holes took over two hours. Oh yes, I forgot to mention, I did make a new valve fork because I was not happy with the one that I made in the last video. I need to do a little bit more polishing on this but I'll leave it for now. Time to make the drop arm from the cast iron casting. I hold it in the chuck, centre drill it, drill it and ream it and then I reverse it in the chuck and I put a bar through just to check that it's in line then I remove the bar, machine the other end, drill it with a centre drill then drill all the way through and ream that too. And that's the drop arm finished, a very simple job that could go spectacularly wrong, but you're only going to lose a drop arm. So it's not that nerve wracking because a replacement drop arm from Stuart's is not very much money. But a replacement flywheel really is. So I was quite nervous when I was doing that, but I wasn't nervous at all when I did this. As well as the bracket, there's still some more cosmetic cleaning up to do on the drop arm. There's still quite a long way to go, but I'm getting there slowly but surely. This is the casting for the expansion link. Not much to go on really, it's just a lump of cast iron and it needs machining. And it needs a slot milling in it, a curved slot, a piece of proper engineering. On the other hand, making these is going to be a lot of filing and grinding and messing about. Really I could fabricate these out of mild steel. But in this case I'm not taking the easy option. But rough as they are, I'm going to use these castings and clean them up and make it all work with the parts that came with the kit that I got from Stuart Models. And that's about it for this episode. All I've got to say is, apart from if you wish to join Patreon and become a patron of the channel, the address is currently on the screen. But it's not compulsory. And thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.